What else we got here? Let me um, pause that while I minister the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We want to focus on giving thanks and thanksgiving. Amen. We got to wait till Thanksgiving Day. You know what I'm saying? The day that people acknowledge is Thanksgiving, a day of thanks, a national day of thanks. Okay. Uh, we're commending the scriptures all throughout to give thanksgivings to God. Amen. Be thankful and grateful and to bless his name. I'm going to read a portion of scripture here in Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to read up on it. Our key, you know, word is thanks or giving thanks. Amen. Praise God. Here in Ephesians chapter 5, I'm going to begin reading at verse 14 down to verse 21. And it reads, Wherefore he says, Awake you that sleep and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. Praise God. May God add a blessing to the hearers and more so to the doers of his word. Amen. We have to, you know, arise from our slumber and sleeping. Okay. Christ will give us light. We got to walk in light, the light. We got to walk in love. We got to walk in wisdom. We got to walk in truth. We got to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. And then he says, uh, we have to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. God don't want to be walking around as fools, okay, but as the wise, amen, and being wise, amen, walking in wisdom. And we have to redeem the time because the days are evil, the last days, the days and times that we're living in. Okay, and yes, there's going to be times of, you know, joy and, you know, and seasons of peace and joy and, you know, good, good times, good feelings, good fellowship, you know, something like that, good gatherings and things like that, you know, uh, but we need to not be ignorant you know, and knowing what the will of the Lord is that the days are evil. The times that we're living in, they are evil times. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to, uh, he says, wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Of course, we got to redeem the time because the days are evil. The last days we're living with, living through some evil days. Okay, wherefore be you not unwise, don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get an understanding. We have to not only get knowledge of, you know, the, the will of the Lord, but we got to get an understanding of the will of the Lord so that we may properly do it. Amen. And we can expect the promise of God to um, be uh, fulfilled in our lives because we have a correct, right, true understanding of the will of the Lord through his holy will and his holy word and his holy apostles and prophets and his son, Jesus Christ, his ministers. Amen. And this we definitely need to take off going into this holiday season. Okay. It's not a sin to drink 
wine, okay? But it is to get drunk. That's over indulgence, dissipation. So he says, and be not drunk with wine as you're gathering together and somebody done spiked the eggnog or you're having that mixed drink, okay? <laughs> you know, uh, just don't be throwing them back and throwing them back and throwing them back, you know? If you want to drink, drink in moderation and don't drink and drive. Call an Uber, call a Lyft, have a family member or a friend to drive you. Like if you know you're going to be drinking, okay? Be And definitely do not be drunk with wine. Don't think because I'm not drunk because I'm drinking, I, I'm good to get behind the wheel. Mm -mm. And be not drunk because, you know, they have roadblocks set up. And sometimes they just be doing sobriety, sobriety checks. And you might not consider yourself to be drunk, but then if they you say blow on this and you hit that level, they like, sorry, now you know you don't want to get a DUI. So take heed. Take heed. Don't get caught up in the festivities and me and your long lost cousin you ain't seen since last, you know, you know, Thanksgiving or the holidays or their birthdays or whatever, or it been longer than that, you know, you're like, oh wow, my friend ain't seen in a long time. Hey, remember we used to drink it up and throw it back and everything and do this and do that? Yeah, let's go out to the club and everything like that. It's like, whoa, slow your robe. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. See that you you see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Okay? Don't be drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. I'm not saying it's a sin to drink wine. In fact, you know, what I'm saying he, he encouraged the young Timothy to drink a little wine for your for your stomach sake and for your often infirmities, because just drinking water back there, it wasn't pure water like we have it filtered today. You know, and wine was considered to be somewhat medicinal, done in moderation. That's why he said drink a little wine, it'll help you and your stomach, probably an ulcer or something like that, you know? But that don't mean just be at keeping up wine every day and just be throwing down wine, you know what I'm saying, like that, and, you know, be drunk. But be filled with the spirit, because if we're under the influence of the wine, excess and drunk, that means that we're, the wine is, in, is influencing us, and that a person is under the influence or intoxicated with wine and drunk. You're not in control, but be filled with the spirit because we're supposed to be living in the spirit, walking in the spirit, being loved the spirit, controlled, led, empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we got to stay in the spirit, okay? So when you're out having a good time, Thanksgiving and with your family and friends and stuff like that, celebrating the holidays, stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Yeah, they want to go out. They want, they want to do all that. Like, okay, uh, if you go out to the, you better make sure you know what you're doing and keep an eye on your, your glass because you don't know who want to date rape you or, or drug you and take you out to the parking lot and have their way with you. It might even be some of your close friends and your relatives, you know what I'm saying, trying to take advantage of you. You never know. And you don't want to find out either. Not like that. So be filled with the spirit. Don't be going out there throwing up, throwing back spirits, you know what I'm saying, like that. Drinking up and getting getting drunk and uh, bringing shame upon yourself and uh, your testimony, and that's going to reflect on God, you know. It says, speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Of course, you know what I'm saying, this doesn't mean that we cannot listen to what's called secular music. Because there's a lot of good, what they call secular music. It might not be psalms or hymns or spiritual songs, okay? There's a lot of beautiful love songs. Matter of fact, I was on YouTube last night and um, I don't know, I was scrolling and I saw, uh, it was uh, by, it was like a, a award show. I don't know, Soul Train or one of those award shows. And it was New Edition and they were honoring the spinners, Anybody for me with the spitters, they're old, you know what I'm saying, soul R&B group back in the days, you know what I'm saying, like that. A lot of beautiful songs they sung, beautiful love songs they sung, you know what I'm saying, like that. And uh, and so I listened to that as New Edition was giving their rendition and honoring them. It just brought back a lot of memories of my childhood. We grew up in the house listening to that music, dancing to that music, you know what I'm saying, like that. It was it was love, so much love in it, and good time and good feelings with family, you know. And so before you know it, then I was looking at another one that... It showed them. They was on Soul Train and other th other sets and stuff. 
Midnight Special, and they were singing those beautiful love songs. They was bringing back so much, so many memories, so so beautiful, singing so effortlessly. Beautiful messages in the songs. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that we can't listen to songs that are not psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, okay? So it doesn't mean you can't, you, you ain't got to be a party pooper and that you can't enjoy your family and y'all playing some beautiful music and having a, a good time in your homes and stuff like that. And, or you're riding your car sometimes like that, you know. Just make sure you're singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, to do all to the glory of God. Giving thanks always for all things. Unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you can't do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> don't do it. Okay? If it's going to bring reproach upon his name, then don't do it. If you can't be having self-control and moderation, then don't do it. Okay? Don't be, you know, don't be un unwise. Don't walk as fools. Okay? Don't lose track of the times and the days that we're living in that you just throw caution to the wind and, you know, and you be strung out somewhere, laid out somewhere. Like, like oh, ain't that sister so-and-so from church? Ain't that brother so-and-so the minister so-and-so from church? And, yeah, he, oh, man, he messed, she messed up, told her. Oh, she done urine on herself, and, and that's messed up, man. Just sloppy drunk, falling all over the place. And that's messed up. They had to put him in the back seat, you know what I'm saying, or got to rush him to the hospital to they overdose on, you know, drinking alcohol. No moderation, no self-control. Other people crawling up their skirts and, and doing what they want to them, and God forbid. So let's take heed. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We as believers, we are supposed to be subject to one another in the fear of God. Amen. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We fear God. We don't want to do anything to incur his chastening rod, his displeasure. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. How you all doing this morning? Okay, if you haven't already done, you're welcome to come in and meet and greet me. You know, greet everyone's here. If you have any prayer requests for yourselves, for your family members near or far, uh, you want to pray that your family members have safe travels by land, by sea, by air. If they're traveling, and man, pray for traveling mercies and grace for them, you know, you know, like that. So, and they reach the destination and be well and not delayed, okay, like that, and all be well. They don't experience no, you know, badness, evilness done to them. They don't witness none of that. And they don't do no evil toward anybody. And that all will be well with you and your family. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And God will see everybody back home safe and sound. And have a prosperous journey. Amen. Beloved, I pray and wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. And all of the saints of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So type in your prayer request for you and your family members, your neighbors. And if, if your neighbors ask you to pray for them, you don't have to say nobody's name specifically. You don't have to name your employer. You don't have to name your friend. You don't have to name your coworker. You don't have to name, you know what I'm saying, your clients and your customers by name if they ask you to pray for them. Amen. If you got a business, you want it to continue to prosper, be in the black, you know what I'm saying, like that, uh, during this holiday season with a lot of Biz, you know, people's uh, business potentially can get in the black and over and above that, you know what I'm saying? So they, they can not only just be prosperous, but they can be blessed to be a blessing to others. Amen. Like that. Okay. We ought not to only look out for our own interests, but the interests of others. Amen. And we should be thankful and grateful for what we already have. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Of course, that's when you're getting, of course, going toward Christmas. And we know some people's birthday is on Christmas and everything like that. They want a birthday, you know what I'm saying, acknowledgement. And they want, you know, they want a Christmas acknowledgement, you know what I'm saying, like that. But we got to be thankful and grateful for what we already have. As it says here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, let your conversation or your conduct be without covetousness. Greedy longing for something. 
and be content with such things as you have. Now, you might not have all your needs met right now, but be content with such things as you have and be grateful for them. Be thankful. Don't be looking at them like, oh, that's old. That's crummy. And that's second down. That's me down. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Oh, they got a new this and they got a new that and they got that. But they, they got. And you start comparing yourself. No, be thankful and grateful and content with what you already have. Be thankful and grateful and content for what you already have. Give thanks to God for what you already have. Amen. And be a faithful steward over, over it and its uses. And God, you know what I'm saying? Well, through his divine providence, he would increase you with more, more so with his presence. He said, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you. Now people come and go. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Marriage is broken up. Vows are broken. You know what I'm saying? People unfaithful and people that you thought were going to be there, they, they left you high and dry, you know? Like the prodigal son. When he began to be in want, no man gave unto him nothing. They were not there for him. But the Lord's promise is, I will never leave you. Never. I don't care how low you go, you know what I'm saying, or, or what you don't have or whatever. But he ain't going to leave you because you ain't got no money. He ain't going to leave you because you ain't rich in material wealth and possessions. He not going to leave you when the trial, the tribulation, the persecution, the affliction come. He not going to leave you. He not going to forsake you. Other men will. Paul said, all men forsook me. But don't lay it to their charge. Okay, we have God's promise, the Father's. I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, confidently say, the Lord is my helper. It don't get no better than that. And Lord can use other people to help you, but it's all, you know what I'm saying? All of my help comes from the Lord. I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is my helper. <laughs> you don't get no better help than that. Okay? Ask God, you know what I'm saying, to be your helper and to send his divine help, his divine providence, his Holy Spirit, his divine providence, his help, his well-timed help in your time of need. And he said, I will... And we can boldly say that the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me, okay? I'm not concerned about the consequences or the outcome. I trust that to God, okay? I stand on his promise. I speak in agreement with his will, his promise. Amen. Praise God. And be thankful and grateful for what we already have. A lot of people get discontent this time of year. They see in other people, they celebrate their birthday. Other people, that their birthday on things, that they birthday on Christmas, they birthday on New Year's, or it's near there, and they celebrating and they looking for gifts and gifts are giving, and, and they ain't got that coming from their family and their friends. And they, you know, they begin to internalize things and compare, you know what I'm saying, and become discontent, dissatisfied with what they already have, you know what I'm saying, and they don't even appreciate, you know what I'm saying, that the Lord is, has been keeping us, okay, that we have food and clothing. With these, we shall be content, provided, yes, we need shelter, you know what I'm saying, we may even need transportation, we may need help from others, but the body of Christ or God can use anybody to come along to help you. You'd be surprised. It might be a homeless person, you know what I'm saying, that can help you. Don't think God's help only come, you know what I'm saying, in a certain way or a certain, you know, stuff like that. If he can command the ravens to feed the prophet of God, come on now. God can use a homeless person to bless you, to encourage you, to strengthen you up, to build you up in your most holy faith, spur you on to love and good works. Don't think, you know, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, okay? And a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. When people are reaching out, blessing you and helping you and encourage you, that's coming from heaven. That's coming from our Heavenly Father who will never leave us nor forsake us. And we are his body in the earth. And yeah, some Christians are homeless. Some Christians, you know what I'm saying, are orphans. Some Christians, you know what I'm saying, been used and abused and served like hell, okay? Some Christians have. But we have God's promise that he will work all things together for our good. Those who love him, who are the called according to his purpose. 
Okay, he's going to work all things together for our good. He's even going to prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Oh, yes, yeah, some people are going to be sitting at the tables with their own enemies. Families and friends come Thanksgivings. Your enemy is going to be right there. Okay, the fork and the knife is for cutting the food and eating. Okay, it's not for stabbing and you know what I'm saying? Until you do right by me, everything, you know, you don't start cursing people. You know what I'm saying? Like that. No. Bless them. Feed them. You want some more ham? Take a big old piece. You want some turkey? He got the best piece for you. Okay? Have yourself. Y'all get first dibs. Okay? Esteem others better than yourself. Not everybody running, trying to pile up their plate, trying to be greedy, get more than they, they eyes are bigger than their stomach because they trying to get the best of everything first. Don't be like that. Okay? God will provide. You might not get your fill then. You might leave and you never know your neighbor likes, hey, we got plenty of food. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to make a plate for you. And they like, look, I'm giving you Tupperware for the this and Tupperware for the that. You're like, oh my God, I didn't expect this. Exactly. God going to provide. It might not come how you think it's going to come, but it's going to come. Okay? My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Moreover, he'll bless you to be a blessing. Amen? Be a blessing to somebody. Just don't think about you and yours. Okay? Think about those who don't have their daily bread. Invite them, the lame, the hawk, the blind. Okay? They can't repay you. Okay? You invite your family and friends. They can repay you. And you have your reward in that. What he says, you know what I'm saying? You will be rewarded, repaid at the resurrection of the just. Okay? Yeah, go out and volunteer. You know what I'm saying? Get with those organizations and ministries and churches that they're going to be going out serving on Thanksgiving. Serving other people, homeless people. You know what I'm saying? Like that, orphans and widows and visiting people in their homes. The elderly, you know what I'm saying? The widows. Amen. Visiting them, taking them food, sitting with them. Okay, singing with grace and, and melody in your hearts to the Lord. Okay, just don't go over there taking food. Take a good spirit. Amen. Take a take the the gift of joy over there. Okay, and begin to praise and to worship God, or the you know what I'm saying make melody in your hearts to the Lord. Turn on the music and y'all have a good time right there. Jimmy, okay, I was watching the old video. It was on the other day. Uh, uh, it was, what is his name? Terrence Trent Darby. And, he, and the song was, Sign your name across my heart. I want you to be my baby. If I'm not mistaken, who was the one? Was it him that he says, um, was it him or someone else? He said, we don't have to take our clothes off to have a good time. Oh no, we can dance and party all night and sip some cherry wine. Uh huh. Okay, and you don't need no alcohol to have a good time, period. You got joy in, in your heart. You know what I'm saying? Share what you have in your heart, the joy of the Lord. Share that to someone who may seem joyless. Okay, I ain't trying to say push it off on it because some people they might be angry, they mad, and they mad at the whole world. And they see other people happy and everything like that, giving gifts and thankful and grateful and got blessings. And you know, you got to watch out for those. Those people, you know, they might be bitter and you might be trying to encourage them and build them up and share joy. And they reject it. Well, you better shake the dust off your feet and go on and pray for them. Okay, because you don't want them to take their bitterness out on you. Okay. Sometimes you extend your hand to, to help and to give, and some people, they just knock it away, and they push it away. And they do that, you say, fine, throw your hands up to, in prayer and keep it moving, okay? And God will give you an opportunity to give it somebody else who's praying that God sends somebody to give unto me, to help me, to encourage me, okay? And it will be received with thanksgiving, and it will cause many thanksgivings unto God. Because everybody ain't grateful and thankful for what they have. Or what the Lord is trying to give them his salvation, his love, his peace, his joy. They're not grateful, not, not thankful that he died on the cross for their sins. They're not. It's the goodness of God that leads you and I and everyone to repentance. And they refuse his goodness. I don't want it. I don't want it. They don't receive it. Their hearts are hardened against God. They don't receive God's goodness. And they become bitter. So take heed. You got to be able to discern in the spirit and know who, who has a grateful heart, a thankful heart, a heart, you know what I'm saying, that can receive and give joy. You know what I'm saying? Who's walking in peace and love, who is sowing peace. 
the end of that man is peace. Okay? Joy. Okay? Who are in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's what we can be thankful for and grateful for. It's not in meat and drink. And that's good. You know what I'm saying? We have our daily bread. Amen. Pastor uh, Morris sent him an invite if he want to come on and, and, and exhort us in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Just found the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jehovah God. Amen. My dear sister Tammy. Amen. Thank you for testifying to the to the truth and giving God praise and glory. Amen. Glory. Praise God for always being with us. Yes. Never leaving nor forsaking us. Lord God, forgive me for not being thankful and thanking you enough for you are more than worthy of it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we, we got to stop thinking in terms of only when someone does something for me. Like, what have you done for me lately? If it ain't bring me some, you know what I'm saying? I know you're doing stuff for me that, you know, and people treat God like that. You know, what, what God, ain't, you know, I'm praying for this and I'm praying for that. And I'm, uh, what has he done for me lately? And then people begin to fall away and backslide and, you know, go back in the world and get into the flesh and things of that nature. You know, we feel like 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 God, because if he did something, he didn't answer the prayer. So he's not worthy to be praised. He's not worthy for us to give thanks to God, to wake up every morning and say, thank you, Lord, for letting me live to see another day. I don't care if it's raining, sun, the storm outside. I'm alive. Thank you. I could have been dead and gone. First thing I'm going to do is give you thanks and praise for letting me be alive, okay? To live, to be, you know what I'm saying, to be recipient of your love, your grace, your mercy, and everything that you have for me that you want to use my life to be a blessing to others, okay? That you're still working it out for my good and your purposes. And some people feel like God ain't did nothing for them. He ain't answered their prayer, so they're not grateful. They're not thankful. They can't even remember the last time God blessed them. In their minds, they think, I can't remember the last time God, you know, he blessed me or did something. Like, it got to be something super big or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. If we stay in the spirit, we're we going to have joy. We're going to have peace. We're going to be grateful. We're going to be thankful. Get in the spirit. Be content with such things as you already have. A lot of people are discontent. They're not grateful for what they already have. Because they're always seeing somebody else. They got that new, new, that new, new. She got a new man. They got a new woman. They got a new car. They got a new house. They got a new job, new career, new business. And they, they like, they prospering and having a good time. And then we start comparing ourselves amongst ourselves. That's not wise. Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's not wise. Well, God, that's for you. It's for you. Okay, because a lot of people be faking it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Okay? People like to put on the front. You know what I'm saying? Don't compare yourself to them. Be thankful and grateful and content for what you already have. Okay? And think about it. What you already have. Okay? And not so much as materially. Okay, think about the spiritual blessings. You know what I'm saying? We've been forgetting all that. People forget about all the spiritual blessings we've been blessed with in heavenly places and stuff like that. Always thinking in terms of the natural. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Or temporal blessings. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And forget about all the spiritual blessings. And forget about all the spiritual, spiritual Think about all the, the, the blessings, the spiritual blessings. Thank you. His great and precious promises. It's in Ephesians. I always come here to Peter when I'm thinking about those spiritual blessings. But I'm here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. 
that by these you might be partakers, sharers of the divine nature, God's nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Put me in remembrance. I always go to 2 Peter when what I'm looking for is in Ephesians chapter 1. But that is warranted as well. It's always, it doesn't never let me down. Amen. It's all good. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving, you know what I'm saying, blessing our Heavenly Father. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Oh my God. See, we so focus on the temporal blessings that are here on the earth, we just neglecting all these spiritual blessings. Okay, and where are these spiritual blessings at? In heavenly places. In Christ. And if we're in Christ, we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, so many spiritual blessings in Christ, in heavenly places. We just got to turn our hearts toward there. We got to set our affections on things above, not on the things on the earth. See, a lot of we missing out on so many, you know, saying spiritual blessings. We seeking all the temporal, natural blessings. And if we ain't got that, we, we not happy, we're not content, we dissatisfied, ungrateful, unthankful, missing out on all these spiritual blessings. Colossians 3 and 1 says, if since then you be risen with Christ, see we are risen with Christ. Remember he rose from the dead, he didn't just rose from the dead and just walked the earth, he ascended up and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Since you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, gifts, okay, in heavenly places in Christ. So seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And that's where we get to be discontent. Because we got our affections set on the things of the earth. And if we ain't got those things of the earth, we like, oh man, I'm discontent. I'm not happy, content, satisfied. I'm ungrateful. I'm, I'm mad. You got something you blessed and what? Oh God, you got more than me and whatever like that. And God must don't love me. I'm going to measure my love based on how much he blessed you. And you're neglecting all these spiritual blessings, spiritual gifts. Set your affection on things above, not the things of the earth. We are not supposed to be setting our affection. Let's go look at that word. Too many of us, you know what I'm saying, our hearts are in this world. Our affections are are in this world when they're supposed to be set on things that are above, okay? Not the thing, you know, saying the things of the earth. And that's going to take practice. That's going to take practice. For our focus, we have to, you know, saying put our focus, our affections, our heart, our desires on things above, not the things of the earth. Amen. Praise God. Let me pull this up. Colossians 3. Verse 2. Set your affection. From Nao. That's the pronunciation of the Greek word. From Nao. To exercise the mind. Woo! We about to get some peace, y'all. A lot of people ain't got peace. Why? Because they too focused on what's on the earth. Okay? And ain't no... Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That's only in Christ. 
peace to him that is near and him that is afar off. Okay? He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind stayed on thee. But there's no peace, says my God, to the, to the wicked. We have to exercise our mind by setting our affection, our mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. Not on the things of the earth. To entertain Think about it. You know what I'm saying? Since we, ask, we want to pray for our peace of mind and things like that and, you know, our memories and stuff. Because we what? We too distracted and we are too invested in our minds and thinking on and entertaining on and having a body, every everybody's opinion and what they're thinking and what's trending and all that stuff is going to rob us of our peace of mind. By implication to be mentally disposed. We should be mentally disposed on the things above. Not the things on the earth. Not being concerned about the things on the earth. More or less earnestly in a certain direction. Above. Look up because your redemption draws near. Some of us don't even look up to see the stars no more. When the last time you looked up and saw the clouds on a sunny day. The white clouds. Or when it's not, the sun is not shining through on the screen. Just to look at the clouds. To see the rainfall. You know what I'm saying? The rain coming from the clouds above. When it's a clear night. Just to go out and set your Look up. Look at the stars. Look at the constellations. Look at the handiwork of God that no man has touched. My God. Look at the handiwork of God. Okay, your focus is not even on the earth. It ain't even on mankind. Nor the things on the earth. It's set on, you know what I'm saying, our affections, our mind, on the things above. Spiritual blessings. We can see the handiwork of God. Not just on the earth, but we can look up and see it's so much more. So much more than the things on the earth. This is only one planet and there are countless galaxies of space and material of God's creation. Okay, fearfully and wonderfully made. Awesome in power. His displays of his power, his handiwork. My God, we need to exercise the mind on things above and not on the things on the earth to entertain our minds on the things above and not on the things on earth and we're so concerned we get oh look this tv show and that celebrity and this that the sports and politics and what's going on in this government and what's going on in the world and what's online and what's trending what's the 411 and and you wonder why we don't have peace in our minds. We're vexed, sacrificing our peace for nothing. These things come to nothing. God got it all in his hands according to his will. We are not called to manage the earth and everything, you know what I'm saying? And the whole universe and every little opinion and every little thought and every little, you know, it says, or to have a sentiment or opinion. People are all concerned about other people, you know what I'm saying? Uh, sentimental about things on the earth. About having so much concern about other people's opinions. What other people think of you and stuff like that. Why? It don't matter what other people think of you. As long as you honoring God and obeying him, what matters is the father's commendation. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. And if God is pleased with you, okay, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. My God. Come on now. We seeking to please the wrong people. We, oh, what they going to think about me if I, if I show up looking like this, if I look like this, if I put this on, if I do this, if I do that, if I share my faith and I obey God. If I let my light so shine before men, what are they going to think about me? If God told me to go out into the streets and the highways of the same and share the gospel with those, what are they going to think about me? Who cares about somebody else's opinion? We need to be delivered from the opinions of people. Okay? 
Nobody opinion of us matters. If we obey God and do right by him, okay, God will give us favor in the sight of God and man. You don't court people's favor. You court the favor of God, okay? And God will put it in the hearts of others to see you and treat you with favor. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things and the things of the Gentiles, the world, the nature, seek after. They will be added unto you. Don't worry about your food and your clothing. You know what I'm saying? Like that. What you shall eat, what you shall drink. All these things do the people in the world. They're anxious and worried about. We ain't got to be overly concerned about these things and other people's opinions. We need to be delivered from the opinions of others. We need to be mentally disposed. You know what I'm saying? And have our affection set on the things above and not on the things on the earth. And it says, more or less earnestly in a certain direction, the things above, not the things on the earth. Those things are below us. They supposed to be under our feet. They that should be up here like this, you know what I'm saying? Where our our soul, our mind, our wit, where our spirits at. Well, you know what I'm saying? They under our feet. Like they're not even on our body. Like they under us. We ruling and have a dominion over the earth. All that stuff, put it under your feet. It shouldn't be up here. Look at you shouldn't be concerned about it. Shouldn't be up here. Distracting you and trying to, you know, like that or whatever, or what is coming through your no, like you got silence it, put it under your feet and silence it. You don't hear what the world is talking about, you're not looking to, you ain't checking for what the world is doing. You're not giving no place to the devil. We have to interest, it says, to interest oneself in. We have to interest ourselves in things above, not the things on the earth. In and with, okay, or interest oneself cons uh, with or concern or obedience. That's toward God. To think, to regard, to mind, to be mindful of, to savor. Not a savior, but to savor. Be of the same mind, okay, that is in Christ Jesus. Be like minded. Let this mind as in Christ be in you. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth, for you and I are dead. We are really dead to the things of the earth. And we got to die daily to the things of the earth. We're going to see we got to put it to death. So not a physical putting to death or unaliving. We talking about, you know what I'm saying? We get to that. It says, for you are dead or unalive, not physically, but to the things of this earth. And your life and my life is hid with Christ in God. Now, our life is, is hid with Christ in God. Like the, the enemy really can't touch us unless God gives him permission. And he doesn't wound without cause. He works all things together for our good, those that love him, those who are the called according to his purpose. And he gives us grace for it, to bear it, to endure it, to outlast it. Your life, my life is hid with Christ in God. That's why people can't recognize us. And they don't. And we should stop expecting recognition from the people in the world. Our life is here with Christ in God. Like they can't even see us. They can't even see. We want them to see like, look, look, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I'm a child of God. It's like the word said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. He ain't say nothing about seeing you. <laughs> seeing me. But that's what people do. They do a lot of things to be seen of men. For so did their fathers to the false prophets which, who were before them. They do things to be seen of men. To be thought well of by men. Men who are not in the spirit. Okay. 
Amen? No. We're supposed to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. We don't do it to, you know, to bring glory to ourselves. It's to point them to Christ, the light, that light of every man that comes into the world, the light of life, so that they can see their way out of darkness, okay, and be translated out of the kingdom and power and authority of Satan into the kingdom of his dear son, that they too may have an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith that is in Christ Jesus. When Christ, who is our life, oh my God. Christ is our life. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we or you also appear with him in glory. So he says, therefore, we have to mortify, put to death, unalive, so to speak, your members. It's not talking about physical putting of unaliving. You know what I'm saying? It's not talking about doing no harm to yourself or no one else. Our members, which are upon the earth, Okay, so that lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust, the pride of life, those things are not flowing through us, through our physical members, having rule and dominion and bringing us into slavery. We have to abstain from fleshly lust, desires, which war against the soul. So we got to unalive it, which are upon the earth. And he names them like fornication, which, you know, I've confessed, I've, you know, uh, missed the mark at different times and seasons, backslid, gave into the lust of my flesh, committed fornication, masturbation, things of that nature. Uncleanness. You know, we used to hear the term cleanliness is the next thing to godliness. So we should not be filthy people, okay? We got to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, okay? We got to unalive uncleanness. We, you know, start cleaning up your life inwardly and outwardly, your body, your spirit, man, okay? Stop taking in filthy images, filthy, you know, lyrics and things that's going to arouse lust. And then around us, environment, environment, environment. Clean up our environment. It talks about inordinate affection. Verse 2 says, set your affection on things above. Here he says, inordinate affection. That's verse 5. Inordinate affection. Pathos. It's a Greek pronunciation of the Greek word pathos um, has different connotations like suffering, pathos, you know, like that. Um, subjectively a passion, especially concupiscence. So it's not a good passion. It's not a good passion. It's inordinate affection or inordinate lust. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's not proper. That we have to subdue. Well, actually it says to unalive it. If we want to say that, put to death. Mortify, we say, we say the word here. Mortify. Evil concupiscence. Epithumia. That's the Greek uh, pronunciation of the Greek word. That's a longing especially for what is forbidden. We shouldn't be longing for what is forbidden. The things that we're supposed to be mortifying, we shouldn't be longing and lusting after it, desiring and lusting after it. We have to mortify evil concupiscence. 
evil desires, lust for what is forbidden, like coveting after or desire somebody else's husband or wife or anything of your neighbors, you know, something like that. Or, you know, I mean, it, it, it could be success. You know what I'm saying? If it's not in God, you know what I'm saying? That we, we have this, our motive and desire to, to, to get the bag by any means necessary or something like that, you know, by compromising and things of that nature. Anyway, and covetousness. We're familiar with that term, covetousness. It's similar. It makes you think about evil because it's an evil covetousness, a longing desire is trying to obtain something. It's play onexia, the Greek pronunciation of the word. It's avarice. By implication, fraudulency, extortion, covet, covetousness, covetous practices, greediness, greedy of gain. See, being discontent with what you already have and greedy and trying to get more and more and more. A lot of us are discontent. Why are we not grateful for what we have? Why? Because we like, if I just get this and I just get that, if I just get him and I just get her, I'll be happy and content and, you know, and satisfied. No, you won't. No, you won't. Because like the eyes of the man, lust is never satisfied. Lust is never satisfied. Be content with such things that you already have and don't be greedy and grasping after more and more because then people are going to be like, they're not going to be thankful and grateful what they have. They're like, no, I got to get this and I got to get that. I got to achieve this. I got to achieve that. I got to be, you know what I'm saying, get worldly famous success in, you know, in the world. God's success is not worldly success. It says this covetousness is idolatry because we get so engrossed in it and trying to obtain it even by fraudulency and extorting others, doing evil toward others, covetous practices, that it becomes like a God. It becomes first thing in our plan. Like, my focus is on this. I'm about getting this and achieving this and doing that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not happy and content until I get it. Then ain't no room for God. Ain't no acknowledgement of God. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That becomes an idol. Anything is an idol. And it could be a desire. And it could be a desire for success or worldly success. That, you know what I'm saying, we're putting so much time and energy and effort into it, even, you know, doing bad things to, to, to our, try to obtain such statuses and material prosperity, that becomes an idol. That's idolatry. We're putting that before God. That's an idol. It says, for which things sake, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. That if we're not obeying these commands and ordinances, commands of the Lord, then that means that we're going to be counted as children of disobedience, of whom which things sake, the wrath of God will be coming on the children of disobedience. So what behooves us, like I was saying, uh, sharing earlier with the brother, you know, we're good at talking the talk, but we got to walk the walk and we got to walk the talk. We got to be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. We got to continue there in doing the work for the promise of God is this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Not in his just hearing. Not in his hearing. There's no blessing in just hearing. And we say, yeah, God, add a blessing to the hearers and doers of this word. Because the one who's hearing and doing, that's the blessing. That's the one who's going to get the blessing. It ain't going to be just the hearers of the word. Those people, as the word said, you're deceiving yourself. You can't blame the devil, can't blame nobody else. You're just hearing it but not doing it. We got to walk the talk. The talk is the word of God. We got to do the word. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. Praise God. Where was I? Blessed with all spiritual blessings. Ephesians. In heavenly places. We're missing out on so much more because we're setting our affections on the things of this earth. So much, so much, so much on this earth that we're so discontent, dissatisfied. We're not giving thanksgivings to God for every little thing and all things. I don't care if it's a little thing. I don't care if you walking down the street and see a penny on the ground. Pick it up and give God thanks. Be, give God thanks, recognize him in just the little things. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for letting me live to see another day. It might be storm and cloud outside. 
We need a clean heart and right spirit in us by God Almighty in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Sister Tammy. Thank you, Boom, for following the live. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you and to your family and all the saints of God with you. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Amen. Share and invite others. Tap the screen. Give hearts. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians 1 and 3 again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. It's past tense. It's already done. Like we got so many spiritual blessings, gifts that are already laying up in store, waiting to be revealed in the last time. When we so focused on and got our affections on things of the earth, we're neglecting all these other spiritual blessings. Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We got to get in Christ, get in the spirit, okay, so that we can be the recipients of these, all these spiritual blessings. Amen. Praise God. We always focus on timber, especially come this time of year, going to Thanksgiving. Then after that, Black Friday, and everybody thinking about getting, 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 gain. Give me a gift. Give me a gift. And love does give, but you don't need a certain time of the day to give somebody to show expression of love. You can do that every day. Every opportunity that you have, you can do that. And if people try to make you feel like you ain't give them a gift, you don't love them. They telling you how much they love you. Okay? If you ain't, you know what I'm saying, giving me a gift, then, you know, then you must don't love me. I mean, and look, I got you this. I don't know if I should give it to you because you ain't give me nothing. So, so the love is conditional. It's not unconditional. Or it's based on material things and stuff like that. I'm not saying you don't express your love through, you know what I'm saying, gift giving and things like that. But it's got to be from the heart and it's got to be sincere. But somebody should be able to do, receive your love, you know what I'm saying, like that. Your expressions of love, whether you go out and buy them a gift or not. Because you can express your love to them in other ways and doing other things and saying, uh, speaking into their life. You know, encouraging them and things like that. Sowing good seed into their life. You know what I'm saying? Good words, good deeds. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to be always got to have a, mon a monetary, you know what I'm saying, price on it or a barcode on it. It don't have to be attached to, you know what I'm saying, that. Your worth and your value is not based on nothing in the world. It's based on the Father's love for us. Okay? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Blessings. Eulogia. Where we get the word eulogy from. Okay? That's in the Greek. Eulogia. Fine speaking. Like we talked about, I, I did a, a few messages, uh, a study of the word, and the word is bless. Amen. That we're supposed to be speaking well of others. We're supposed to be blessing others with our mouth. Do we know the power of blessing people with our mouths? Sincerely from our hearts? They go so far. More than you can, you know what I'm saying? No. No. Jesus took the two fishes and bread or whatever. He broke them. He lifted up them head and he blessed them and gave them to his disciples and they gave them to the multitudes and they fed over 5,000 men alone, not counting women and children. All because he took the little that he had that somebody gave to him, lifted up and asked the father and spoke a blessing over it. He said, I will bless those who bless you. And curse those who curse you. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. It is God's will for the, all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay? And if we don't have that desire in our hearts. And we got ill will in our, our hearts toward our enemies or anything like that. No, he said, bless your enemies. Speak well of them. If they're even doing something good. Say, hey, that was good what you said. That was good what you did. Bless them. Fine speaking, like when they when someone unalive and they're giving a eulogy, the ministers, they think about the good things and the good memories 
about that person, whether they know him personally, what the family told them, and they're conveying that to the minister so that they can speak well of them. They were this and they were that, and they did this and they did that. Those treasured memories, speaking well of them. I ain't talking about preaching them into heaven, okay? Elegance of language. Not let no corrupt communication proceed of our, out of our mouths. That, but that which is to the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Grace and blessing unto the hearers. A commendation. Commending people for, you know, saying something good or doing something good. Speak well of them. And like I said, this has your eulogy, what a minister does when someone is unalive. The family lets them know or they know them personally. People begin to come up and they begin to speak of the goodness of the person, their thoughts, their, their words and their deeds, their actions. The good memories they left but that they experienced with them. That's what eulogy means. Fine speaking, eloquence of language, commendation, verbally, verbal commendation, reverentially, Adoration to speak, you know what I'm saying, uh, to, uh, in a way of adoring them. Even religiously, like I said, in a lot of religious, like as ministers, you know what I'm saying? Now we call, you know what I'm saying, speak well of people, but we also got to tell you the good news, but we also got to give warning too, and that in love. We're called to speak the truth in love. We warn people of the wrath of God that is to come. Repent for the wrath of God that is to come. That's love. That's speaking the truth in love. Or benediction, like when we pronounce a blessing at the end of my lives, that's what I do. I speak a blessing over your lives and this broadcast for future viewers that they, when they come to the end of it, they too may receive a blessing. There's a lesson waiting at the end of the broadcast for them. Amen. And what I generally do is I said, you know, everyone lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Open up your hearts to receive the blessing. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you complete in every good work to do his will. Working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Grace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I bless you and the Lord that his will may be done in and through you, through you. Okay? That's what God gave, told Moses to tell the priests to bless the children of Israel. He gave them the words, God's, it's God's will for all the families of the earth be blessed. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Don't be cursing people and speaking ill of them. Speak blessing. If you can't bless, pray for them. And I know sometimes I slip on my tongue too. And I say, oh Lord, forgive me. I should have said that. Forgive me, Lord. Lord, Lord you know what? Lord, bless them, save them, heal them, deliver them. You know what I'm saying? Give them, you know, bless the works of their hands. I pray for their good, that your will be done in their life. And take this ill will, ill feeling out of my heart and my mind for, toward them. Anything, anything negative, I repent of that. Help me. Give me more grace to overcome these sinful tendencies. In Jesus' name, amen. You got to be quick to recover. You'd be surprised how far it goes. Okay? By extension, benefit. We're playing, uh, speaking a benefit over people. Not that God curse them and get them and everything like that, you know. A benefit, largeness. We want you to increase. Our beloved, I pray above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Bless and do not curse. Blessing is a matter of bounty, bountifully, fair speech. Amen. Praise God. Blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And these are, okay, even like that, from the Holy Spirit, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Spiritual. That's spiritual blessings. The graces of the Spirit. Okay? In heavenly places in Christ. 
Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all for being here. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And for um, fellowshipping with me. Amen. Um, give me an opportunity to serve you through prayer, supplication, thanksgivings, intercessions, giving up thanks, being made for all men, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable. In the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the full knowledge of the truth. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Bird Love, uh, for following the live. God bless you richly. How long have you been a Christian for? Uh, since uh, April of 1992. So do the math. Amen. Praise God. And thank you for your likes. We have the 14,000 plus likes. So thank you all who have given the like, shared the, the broadcast, invited others. Amen. Um, for your gifts, may the Lord bless you wonderful. Amen. Praise God. And hope y'all enjoyed the fellowship, the praise and the worship. Amen. Praise God. And, you know, I'm I'm at a crossroads. I'm thinking, you know, should I go ahead and end this portion of this live and then come back and rebroadcast? Because, you know, I could take me a break and find me some breakfast. I think I'll do that. I think that's wisdom right there. Since I had already gave the benediction right there. Uh, I already, really I already gave the benediction. So I think that would be wisdom, the walking wisdom. Amen. So I thank you all for being here and everything like that and for fellowship, for praying for me, encouraging me in the Lord, testifying to the truth. Amen. As you hear me speaking the truth and love, amen. As I um, pronounce blessing on you and your families and your neighbors and your bloodline, amen. And say grace and peace be multiplied unto you all. And that, you know, have a happy Thanksgiving to you and your family members near and far and in your travels. Amen. That you all have a prosperous journey in your travels. That you reach your destination safely, whether you're traveling by land, sea, or air. Amen, that you will reach uh, your destination safely and all may be well with you and your family and your travels and in your households and make sure y'all be safe in your cooking and things of that nature. No fires, no fights, no violence, no ill will toward anyone. Okay, peace and goodwill on earth toward all men. And be ye thankful. Give God thanks in all things. Amen. Be content with such things as you have. For well, he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear. What can man do unto me? Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. And for those of you, um, if you want to partner with me in my ministry, or if you just want to give a one-time gift, or as you're able, as often as you're able, to, you're welcome to give your gifts you will see uh, my profile, my direct.me link. It takes you to my direct.me profile. And you'll see all the links to my social media presence on other platforms. And I admonish you to follow me on those platforms, especially on my YouTube channel, Sword the Word. I have a lot of ministry videos I've done here on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Instagram over the years. I've been doing online ministry since 2008. Amen. Praise God. So I have a plethora of ministry videos on my Sword of the Word YouTube channel, even short, some longer, some shorter, and shorts. I would appreciate you go over there and subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, watch my video content. Amen. I pray you be blessed by it. And all I ask is that it, when you're finished, hit the like button. Leave a comment if you can, if you have the time to, if you feel that you want to encourage me or you're grateful with what you heard. Amen. Leave a comment to encourage me and others. And then share it with others, even if it's just one person. I pray that the Lord will bless you and return one your fold. Amen. For those who would like to give uh, a monetary uh, grace gift, I can say you can go to my direct.me link and you scroll down. If you're on PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App, you can give your best grace gifts there. And I pray that the Lord will bless you one hundred fold as well. Amen. Praise God. Y'all continue to pray for my strength in the Lord and my health and wholeness in my body, my whole spirit, my whole body, and my whole soul. Amen. That be preserved blameless. Amen. Amen. Until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would do the same for you all and your families as well. 
Amen. Praise God. And so, um, so I already pronounced a blessing over you all. I gave the benediction already. Amen. Let me speak going back through that as well. And so, um, so y'all continue to have a super blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ with your family, Christian friends, and all the saints of God with you. And Lord willing, I will see you soon. So you're welcome to follow my ministry and hit that notification bell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. All my notifications are coming up, my devotional, my word of the day, you know, like that. It's the holiday, so I'm going to kind of, you know, a little, take a little easy there. Of course, you know, I've already been up in, in the word and everything like that. So that's kind of, of course, I just spend more personal time in prayer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and raid the fridge and see what I can eat for breakfast. I might end up eating a bowl of cereal, who knows, or some, a can of soup, perhaps. I got some soup. So, amen. So, Lord willing, I will see you all soon. And so, I think probably within the next hour, I think I'll come back on because I'm well rested. I'll come back on. We'll pray some praise and worship music. And, you know what I'm saying, be ready to take up your prayers. And, your, you know, you can share your testimonies and your thanksgivings as well. And if I feel led the spirit, we can get back into the word of God. We got so much to be thankful for and grateful for. So, Lord, put me in remembrance. We can go seek out the scriptures that talks about thanksgivings and giving God thanks. Amen. And, and thanking other people as well. Amen. And blessing them. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. Lord willing, I will see you all soon. Amen.